many construction projects consists of many individual operations. To make the best use of resources, it is important that these should be planned, scheduled and controlled in the most efficient way. A technique used by management to do this is called critical path. This, for example, is part of a diagram for a motorway. Critical path has the particular advantage that it is a visual presentation and focuses the attention of management on the most important jobs in the project. In the construction industry, this technique is particularly valuable, as rapid and well-judged changes of plan have to be made when unforeseen problems arise. Problems can arise from delays in the delivery of materials or a host of other things, including the weather. Critical path is based on a logically arranged network of arrows. Each arrow represents one operation. The time the operation is estimated to take is marked under it. The length of an arrow is of no significance. It is the sequence of arrows that matters. Walls, for example, cannot be put up before foundations or at the same time. They must be built after the foundations have been completed. Arrows, then, that follow each other represent operations that must be done consecutively, while operations that can be done at the same time are shown by arrows alongside one another. When two or more operations must be finished before a third can start, they are drawn in this way. Arrow diagrams are the basis of critical path planning. Whilst a critical path diagram can be complicated, the principles can be explained by looking at a simple example. This is the site, and this is the project. It has to be ready in 40 working days in time for the August bank holiday rush. To start at the beginning, first the site has to be cleared. The time this will take must be estimated on the basis of previous experience. It will be agreed by the planner and the foreman or the agent who will be in charge of the project. When the site has been cleared, it must be set out. From this point, quite a lot of jobs can be started all at the same time. Excavations for the office foundations, drains and underground services, and excavating the pit for the storage tanks. The storage tanks require a further seven days for delivery, so this is also marked in. All these operations can start as soon as the site is set out, so their arrows are drawn alongside one another. At this point, the only aim is logical planning. Scheduling is treated later on, but it is convenient to estimate the duration of each operation at this stage and mark them in. Concentrate on the office building for a moment. After the excavation, the foundations are concreted, then the walls and the roof. But wait a moment. Before the roof is started, the window frames should be in. They must be done at the same time as the walls, but they cannot be started until the foundations are finished. A broken arrow, called a dummy, links the two starting points. When the roof is on, the plumber, electrician and the joiners can all start work together. But the plumber cannot begin until the underground services, such as drains, have been completed. So, to maintain the planning logic, another dummy arrow is drawn in. Dummies have no time set to them. They are brought into the diagram to show the logical sequence of thought and of events. After the underground services have been finished, the site can be covered with hard core and then the pump plinth constructed. Next, the petrol tanks. After excavation, the bottom can be concreted and the sides bricked up. Now the tanks are ready to be lowered. 
assuming that they were delivered on time. The next job is to tarmac the site. By this time, the pump plinth should have been finished and then the pumps can be fixed. The job is well ahead now, and when all the services have been completed in the office, the plasterers can get to work. By now, the pumps should have been fixed. The whole job must be painted, and then it will take, as always, a few days to clean out the site. The completion of the arrow diagram ends the first stage of planning, in which all the operations have been arranged in their logical sequence. The next thing to be tackled is the schedule. The earliest time at which each operation can be started is calculated and marked in a square box. These times are called earliest event times. Zero is obviously the earliest time for the start of the project. The earliest event times for all the other stages of the project are found by adding the duration of the jobs lying on each path. Where two operations have to be completed before a third can be started, both paths have to be measured. The longer of the two paths gives the earliest event time. It is, of course, necessary to include dummy arrows in the paths examined, although they do not themselves add to the time. The earliest event time for the completion of the last operation is clearly the total duration of the project. It is the sum of the times taken in the longest sequence of operations. Another set of times is now worked out and marked in circles. Called latest event times, these are the latest times an operation can take place without delaying the whole project. For the end of the project, Latest and earliest event times are, of course, the same. All others are found by subtracting the duration of a job from its finishing time, working backwards along each path. Now that the scheduling is complete, it is obvious that some jobs have a certain amount of latitude about the times at which they can be started or finished. Other jobs have no latitude at all. Their starting time is fixed, their finishing time is fixed, and the duration of the job is the same as the time available. Such jobs are of critical importance in meeting the schedule. The sequence of these jobs, that is the longest path through the arrow diagram, is called the critical path. As the length of the project depends only on jobs that lie on the critical path, these are the operations that management must supervise most carefully. One thing is obvious already. The filling station is not going to be finished on time. The schedule was 40 days, and the critical path is 41 days long. The only way to meet the schedule is to shorten one of the operations on the critical path. The visual presentation makes it easier to spot the alternatives that are available. The painting could be speeded up at some financial cost by using faster drying paints, working overtime and so on. In this way, two days are cut out from the critical path and the job can now be completed a day under schedule. Now the CP diagram for the job is complete. Any operation not on the critical path has spare time for its completion. This spare time, or float, is important. Take concreting the petrol tanks, for example, and consider the times relating to this arrow. The job must be finished by day 17. Its duration is 1, so its latest time for starting is day 16. But the earliest starting time is day 9, so there are 7 days spare time, or float, for this operation, assuming it starts at the earliest possible time. If it starts later, some of this spare time will have been used up on previous jobs. If it is delayed until the last possible moment, all the float will have been used up, which could have been available for later jobs in the sequence. An example at the start of the project makes the use of float easier to understand. When the site is set out, three jobs can be started at once. The office excavation is on the critical path. 
and so has no float. But consider underground services. Its latest finishing day is day 19. Its duration is 6. So its latest time for starting is day 13. But in fact, its starting time is day 4. It has, therefore, 9 days float. In a similar way, it can be calculated that the petrol tank excavation has seven days float. The concept of float makes it easier to plan the use of resources. For instance, excavation for the office is started first as it is on the CP. It starts day five and ends day seven. The tank excavations can be tackled next. Starting day eight, it will finish day 12. The underground services can start day 13 and will finish day 18. The last two operations have finished before their latest event times and so have not affected the critical path in any way. But the use of float has enabled one crew to do all three jobs. When there is any serious hold-up on a project, caused for example by a delay in delivery, critical path can be very valuable the petrol tanks are going to be delayed. So the first thing is to check on the float available. In this case, it is nine days. If the hold-up is of a shorter period, there is no problem. But if the hold-up is more than the float, say 12 days, the whole situation is altered and a new path becomes critical. At the same time, the completion date has gone beyond the 40 days allowed. A crash program must be aimed at one or more operations on the new critical path. Fixed pumps, for example, takes three days. It might be possible to bring in more installation crews and so complete it in one. Now the job can go ahead on schedule. When problems arise, CP can always give an indication of the most efficient and economical way to overcome them. No plan can absolve management from the need for exercising good judgment and making the right decision. But once a plan has been agreed, it must be enforced and only amended when unforeseen problems make it necessary. To record progress on the site, part of a CP diagram can be drawn directly against a time scale, normally to cover the next two or three months. This presentation makes it easy to keep a regular check on work in progress. Critical path techniques are most valuable on large complex projects. On most projects, a computer is an advantage, not only in calculating the critical path, but also in updating the progress on the project at regular intervals, and for analyzing the effects of the numerous changes that can occur whilst work is in progress. building and civil engineering, the critical path technique is an invaluable aid to management. But almost every industry can benefit from the framework of method and logic provided by critical path planning.